Hello everyone, I am Sacred and a heartily welcome to you all to finally another Hearts of Iron 4 Spotlight. Well, today I'm going to review a total conversion mod that aims to bring the world of Game of Thrones to Hearts of Iron 4. Currently it's still unfinished according to the developer, but here you can see already on the upper left side, hear me raw. Alpha 0.1 release. So it's a quite early release, although it's one of the only mods which are playable with Alk, which is quite new as well. Therefore, I thought that's worth checking out. So let's see how the map looks like. In the new game mode, we have the Game of Thrones scenario. Let's actually read that the Game of Thrones. A storm is coming as it seems. Nearly 20 years have passed since Robert Baratheon successfully overthrew the Mad King. But this Westeros is still as conflicted as ever. Rumors of a dark conspiracy still plague the Riverlands. Dawn is steadily drifting further away after the death of their beloved princess. The politics of the Vale are steadily become more insular and the rich becomes more power hungry by the day. Tensions between the North and the Westerlands are becoming more and more violent, and of course, whisper still the echo of a. Okay, that's not really all Let's see how the map looks like. We have following major countries. We have the House of Tully, led by Edouard Daladier. <laughs> we have the Wild of Erin, led by Per Elman Hansen. We have the House of Stark, led by Eddard Stark. And we have the House of Lannister, led by Tyron Lannister. We have the House of Tyrell led by Mace Tyrell. We have the Horse of Baratheon, led by Renly Baratheon. And we have the Horse of Martell, led by Doran Martell. Actually, all of them have their own descriptions. Then we have some minors too. For example, we have the Crown Lands, led by, um, led by Stanley Baldwin. And we have New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> Now we have South Africa and Crownlander Raj. Alright, so let's take a look to the map. Yeah, the map is... I don't know why it's like that here, but it's unplayable in Europe, so I wouldn't play it there if I would be you. Because it seems like some provinces that have been removed from the map, for whatever reason. But for that, you can see here, that's the main area of the game, where it plays. We have the... House of Martell, the House of Baratheon, House of Tyrell, House of Lannister, House of Tully, the Crown Lands. Actually, the interesting thing is that the Free Folk, the Free Folk is led by Mance Raider, and they are actually a communist. And we have a Crusters Keep here, led by a Halado Goodmanson. And we have Knight's Watch, led by the CCF, Geo Mormont. And we have the House of Stark, and they're democratic. Yeah, it's, I have to say, still some things have to be done because, for example, the House of Stark has the Finnish standards, so the Finnish attributes, and House of Tully has the French attributes. Like the disjointed government, which will be hard to remove. <laughs> and the House of Lannister has the Lannister pride. Yeah. Okay, they uh, seem like to be Dutch because it says something like Netherland. And then the rest, for example, that's from Ireland, etc. So let's see what the mod description actually says then. Alright. The year is 1936. And nearly 20 years have passed since Robert's Rebellion all through the Mad King and established a new order in Westeros. Although Lannister is becoming more and more aggressive. House Stark seeks to maintain order. House Martell has not forgotten the atrocities from the rebellion. House Aaron is content to remain neutral. While House Tyrell is eager to get in the fight. With so much chaos, the only people who can truly keep things together are King Robert the First Baratheon and the hand of the King John Aaron. Should something happen to them, Lord knows what will happen to the Seven Kingdoms. So the playable areas, according to the mod, are the minor Westeros and other parts of the vanilla world that still exist. Yeah, okay. 
So let's take a look, let's start from the top and start with the free folk. Yeah, let's spotlight them and compare their army and their strength to each other. And their population. So let's go to the spectator mode first. Back. Data mode. So the free folk, they start off with a good population of 10 million with uh, 13 factories, 3 military and 10 civilian. The Crestus keeps, it starts off with uh, 3000 people and... I think, I think that's like a castle, I don't know. Let's do factories now we have. Uh, we have the uh, Night Watch here starting with 11 factories, 5 military and 6 civilian and a core population of 3.7 million. Then we have the Wars Empire of the House of Stark. Starting off with... Actually, what's that? Oh, okay. Starting off with a core population of 53 million and although a small army of only 88,000 but a huge industry with 26 military, 9 naval and 45 civilian factories. Quite a strength. In the other house of Tully, starting off with a core population of 22 million although with an army of 410,000 and a strong navy as well. Quite a power there. They have units shattered all across the area. Then we have the Airy, starting with a fairly small army and 36 factories in total. And we have the House of Lannister, starting with uh, 35 million people as their core population. An army of 187,000 and 57 factories, so being quite the power as well. And we have House Tyra, starting with 150,000 factories. And 48, uh, I mean, a soldier in 48 factories. And the Crown Lands, I think the Crown Lands, they kind of represent, represent uh, Britain because they have an area of 184,000. Mm, yeah, Stanley Baldwin, they're led by the Conservatives and they're the leader of the Allies, the Crown Lands. Yeah, they even have the British focus tree, so I wouldn't play with them. <laughs> They have 12 factories in total, and they are following subjects. Hmm. The Night's Watch is also a subject of the... Uh, of the Crown Lands. Well, that's interesting. We have then House Baratheon with 18 factories and 10 million people, and then the House of Martel with 30 factories and 23 million people, and an army of 130,000. They also control the Spanish colonies here. What's that? Oh, here we have the free city of Bravos, actually. And I don't know why, but we have the Kingdom of Libya here as well, with... Well, I... They're quite e easy to conquer, con to, considering their circumstances. Then we have House of Baratheon, controlled actually, uh... Well, the Congo as well. That's quite surprising, if you ask me. Yeah, it is, certainly. Then I'd say... Well, let's check the focus trees. The nations with custom focus trees are, well, the House of Stark. They have their own custom focus tree, as you can see. Yeah, with some nice factories and some nice focuses. And they can even uh, create the Stark Tully Alliance. Then, yeah, they can, like, it's mainly to develop the Stark. Then we have the House of Tully with uh, the generic focus. A whale of Arryn with the generic focus. The House of Lannister being fascist, so every nation is democratic, but they're actually a fascist. Well, if you read the book, then yeah, they would be close to being fascist, I'd say. Uh, they got some efforts to increase their industry here as well. Mm. And then they can like do some royal marriages, and actually they can somehow... Uh, if the Crown lands actually get fascist, then they will create the Lannister Baratheon alliance, but uh, that won't happen. Yeah, that won't happen. Uh, climb dominance, the war with Tully, and then it's the wartime Lannisters. So that's quite an interesting spiritual Lannisters. Going to war against basically every nation for them. Well, they have the factories, but the strongest country is the House of Stark. I mean, army wise, they have to uh, rebuild their army, that's for sure. But together with the House of Tully, they should be the, quite the strength. 
They're currently democratic, so if you either go, go communist or fascist, although... Why is Sandra Stark? Let's actually see what happens if the... Uh, if Sandra Stark leads. I'm reading the book and then Sansa Stark is, I think, a vassal of the House of Lannister because she got married to the king, uh, I think, Joffrey. Yeah, that's why I think she is considered fascist too. Let's set the ruling party fascist. Let's see what happens. Okay, um, oh yeah. Well, clearly she uh, doesn't look like a girl. I think we can all agree on that. I think that's not how uh, Sansa Stark looked in the series. Uh, yeah, that's quite some, I mean, some, mm, okay. Okay. Well, let's, yeah, the House of Stark is, would still be called the House of Stark, but the only thing would be that they will be fascist. Alright. Then let's go back to spectator mode. So currently, House of Stark and the House of Lannister have cast the trees. Let's check the House of Tyrell. I think they uh, kind of um, they have a modified focus tree, that's for sure, so... Mm. Yeah, they have a modified generic focus tree, I would say. The House of Baratheon uh, has a custom modified focus tree too, I would say, here. And the House of Morel, I think, has the same, has a custom modified focus tree as well, which is far away from being finished. I would say, yeah, that's the spell of the mods. Now let's apply a country and see how far we can come with the conquering. Yeah. Perhaps uh, let's play as the Lannisters here. Let's play as the Lannisters. Although I really dislike the Lannisters. They are they start off as fascist. And they have an interesting focus tree, so let's play as Tyrion Lannister and be the be the uh, evil person here. Playing on regular, let's play with historical air focuses, although I don't think that this will make a difference. Yeah, it should not. Uh, let's see how things actually work out. Actually, let's play with ours so the world gets more random, yeah. I just thought, let's play with ours, it isn't a big problem anyways. So, in the remaining 18 minutes, 18 minutes, we'll play as the Lord of Lannister and see how far we come on a regular. There we go, let's get straight into the game. So we start off with, well, an army of 187,000. Don't forget that House Tully starts off with an army of half a million. So they are considerably stronger than we are, clearly, clearly. Let's uh, research industry as always. Industry and uh, the SRD. Let's build a little bit of more civilian factories in Palestine. Well, mm. oh, I know why uh, some provinces don't exist because they had been uh, transferred over. For example, um, Westphalia and Rhineland, and then um, some provinces they have been uh, just took over from these uh, countries. Like you can see that they that they actually don't have a province. So that's why it's quite actually quite interesting. Uh, that seems to be quite buggy here that the Whale of Erin controls uh, these states, so like Godland here or what's that? That's uh, the House Barothian controls the likes here, it seems like. Well, that's interesting. And the Crownland Arash is actually a puppet of the uh, of the Crownland, so that's also quite interesting. Vietnam is, not, uh, Vietnam is independent, British Malaya uh, not. Hmm. The world looks quite interesting to say the least. Yeah, alright, so let's, um, let's let us start. Get some weapons uh, researched and also some artillery. Alrighty, oh. More, I would say, let's also get some planes, some dice from us. Good to have. We only need uh, rubber. A rubber, can't I get it from a neighbor? No, they are so far away. Not from Brazil. And thanks to the front house of Martel. Alright. I have 8 Fenero Valkyas. I'm gonna get yeah, my ships they sound Dutch 2, 1 Gen class, etc. Let's get the Rita class. Uh, in land spot. Uh, Queen's Favor. Let's go ahead and. Uh, okay, let's do the Queen's Favor. The union of House Barothian and House Lannister. 
Short create the mightiest power Westeros has ever seen. We must strengthen our ties further. Alright, let's say that. Well, I'm currently reading the book. Reading the book, and I hope I'm not getting spoiled. I don't hope that actually the House of the Lannister will make an alliance with the Osborne Theon. I. Oh, damn it. Hmm. I have a feel of unease within myself now. <laughs> Because I may have uh, gotten spoiled, but I don't care. Whatever, whatever. Let's go ahead and see. So, the color to fall will be, I think, the House of Tyrell. Yeah, they are very fucked for this. They're gonna fall for the Lannister issue. We have exactly 24 divisions. Therefore, yeah, all of the Conquer High Garden and uh, Old Town. The unit is how high it's seventy uh, percent, so that means actually that I have to, I guess that I have to conquer all of that territory, including Old Town. Then the war should be done absolutely. The Queen's favor. Now uh, let's go ahead and let's denounce the Starks. Uh, we are selling all the description there. I think yeah, our army. Let's uh, perhaps wide a bit. Mm. I don't know if we would win a war because they have 15 to 27 troops. Mm. Let's they go ahead and conquer them and say, well, it takes 250 days, and that's quite a bit to justify a war goal. Therefore, I'm gonna uh, click ideological struggle to get that. And also, I'm gonna switch to partial mobilization then after I got the points necessary for victory. Our templates, they kind of, kind of sound Dutch like Infantry Division or Brigade de Char Combat. They kind of sound Dutch. Let's train uh, 10 fresh divisions. We have 10 ships, uh, they are just being produced. There we go, stacks are being denounced. Now let's remove Robot Borothean. Oh, well, let's go to the description here. It takes 140 days to remove Robot Borothean. Let's see. No matter how much we contribute to the Crown Lands and the Seven Kingdoms in general, it is clear that the warmongering King Robert Baratheon and his sidekick Ned Stark will always look down upon us. We can no longer tolerate this and must ensure that Prince Joffrey sits on throne as soon as possible. All we have to do is make sure that the old king suffers a little, let's say, incident. Yeah, that may be... Uh, Old world, so let's boost the fascists and the crown lands. Although, why do they have Lannister pride when the crown lands they aren't Lannister? Well, that's quite weird. Well, King Robert the first is gonna die. Now, let's see what happens. So, we are removing Robert Baratheon from the throne for once and for all. Let's go ahead and get here partial mobilization. I think it's time to actually re equip our. Military sector, so let's go ahead and maximize our factories here and here. After we uh, got these civilian factories built. Yeah, let's see how Europe will look like, especially Germany. Huh. Things will be quite interesting, especially here, let's see. <laughs> Alright. Do we have a commander? Yeah, we do. Our best one is Field Marshal Tyrone Lannister. I'd rather get General K1 Lannister, he's an engineer and a ranger. Perfect to fight in that territory. So, after we removed him, let's also get the. Let's get one industrialist. Let's see what happens. Yeah, the fascists should boost the Royal Union of Fascists, they are called. So we removed him. Now, what happens? Or what? Is Lord Eddard, why is Lord Eddard Stark the leader of the Crown Lands? Well, that's quite interesting. Um, alright. Hmm. But that's not really the uh, way it was. That, that, that's quite weird. Hmm. Uh, whatever, let's go ahead and get the factories here. That's weird that the, uh, that the Eddard star got the leader of the Crown Lands. Hmm. 
That's utterly weird. Now the leader of is actually Rob Stark. Well, I think Eddard Stark should get assassinated. I mean, he really uh, didn't seize power if you read the book. So that's, that's quite interesting how things develop here, at the least. So perhaps things are going more f uh, for the Lannisters in favor instead of us. Let's get Tyrion Lannister. The good old Tyrion leading the army. And then let's, uh, let's also get... Uh, yeah, hierarchy, traditional roles, and this hierarchy, hierarchy. And build more military factories throughout the empire. There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's get more weapons. And then let's uh, get more infantry troops. I think it's soon time to declare war against the... Oh, Tyrell. Yeah, I can't get them. Well, it will take us uh, 125 days, so that's quite a bit, so they will have some time to prepare themselves for the upcoming war, that's for sure. Now, let's go for the war industry of the Lannister War Industry, which will grant us extra military factories. Oh, I can actually go for extra 9 civilian factories there. Well, if that's not interesting. That is. Yeah, that's already behind the scars, and then it's also annex, um here, uh, yeah, we stand united, whatever, the sound workhorse. Plus, let's get our planes into the river roads. We have well, 75 planes. Let's put them all to good use, let's say. Steadily deploying, and then go active in the northern reach. Grinding as vital as forts. I think it would easily overwhelm their forces, if you ask me. Let's rally behind this cause, perhaps not trying too much, training a good amount so we can actually have the troops ready when the war breaks out. Then let's get uh, more weapons. Yeah, more weapons and then perhaps also more of this stuff here and also more points. Focus wise, I'll go for a Lannister industry which will grant us with another 9 extra civilian factories. That's greatly appreciated, isn't it? I think, yeah, war will be soon upon the soil of the House of Tyrell. They will face a mighty last army of close to half a million men. They are in the final stages of training, therefore they still shouldn't start a chance. Victory will be ours. What a pride of Lannister. What's happening? A Lannister takeover is happening, why? Or what if the Union, the Royal Union of Fascists becomes the ruling party? Public elections will not be held. Change in popularity of fascists. Oh, now I know, of course. Yeah, yeah. The union was between the Crown Lands and the House of Lannister. But actually, House of Baratheon conquered the rest with the entire army. That's what happened. Yeah, now I remember my knowledge. Right, that's, yeah. And really, I can really uh, suggest you to check out the Game of Thrones series or book. It's great. So we got the war girl, let's declare war, call allies, there we go, and boom, we are in war with the House Tyrell, and we are being victorious on the entire front line. Well, it's because they are actually attacking us, well, they were not ready, so we are just pushing straight, like butter throughout the country. Yeah. Now, it's just a question of time until they can, oh, they are invading us from the sea, that's not so nice, so I need to actually... Uh, redirect some units to garrison the navy. I would not expect that, but still, let's garrison our naval belongings at once. There we go. Only naval dockyards, naval ports. Let's keep pushing now. While they are winning, let's go ahead and do the. Uh, let's get the research slot. We are pushing towards High Garden. Well, I can tell you that's not how easily Lannister conquered the House of Tyrell. I mean, they didn't even go to war with them in uh, the books, so therefore, there we go. Until now, we lost uh, 70,000 men, while they lost 50,000. We have a uh, half a million manpower figured while they have 250,000 to 300,000. Quickly dwindling. Or what House of Stark declared war on the Crown Lands? Oh, wow. Okay, 
that's because uh, they took over. So now, oh, Oswald mostly is the leader of the Crown Lands. Well, isn't that interesting? As we are playing as the Lannister over what the House of Stark captured the, uh, the Night Watch. Well, that's not really how it was in the uh, book, if you ask me, but okay, there, I guess. Um, okay. Let's get more artillery, more sport equipment, then more weapons. The 20 fresh troops, they aren't fighting, that's unbelievable. Go ahead. For honor, for king and country. They're soon gonna surrender. We are on our last stages of our offensive. Plus, we got 20 fresh divisions. And a half a million men in the field, so victory is imminent. Perhaps with infantry attack and defense, that's always useful to have, especially in cases of war. Now, let's speed up the game. Let's see how long they can uh, withstand the pressure. Lannister, hear me roar. Let's get the lannister Baratino alliance. Well, that's quite interesting. So, this will mean actually us going to war against the House of Stark. Well, I don't know what, but the communists are taking over in, uh, in House of Tully. Well, they have half a million troops, so that's quite a bit. If we declare war, then we are need. At least one million troops, not even more. There we go. Now the Bell of Hagar and the Warrant, the Treaty of Old Town. Gonna pass some times and conquer. But I could say like Hall of Tali. But there is. No. Going to take all states. Direct Lannister rule. There we go. We have 135 factories. Isn't that great? Certainly. Certainly it is. Okay, I need some oil. Let's get the oil from the uh, Americans. They're close to me. Americans, give me some oil. They like oil. Alright, so let's see. Can we wage another war? Um, let's perhaps uh, go to war against the House of... Against the House of and then against the House of Stark. So oh, they are really strong. So let's unify the rest first. I'd say let's go to war against the House of Martel. Yeah. Justifying will take, well, 105 days. Fine, that's, that's acceptable. They are not aligned, although not being guarded by anyone, so that's our chance to strike. Although it's quite a mountainous region, but we should win. We should win this war and victory is all the hours. Well, if you want to see me to continue this for perhaps one episode, then uh, go shoot to let me know. I may uh, consider continuing it then. Let's actually uh, go, let's make Soviet-style mass assault doctrine, why not? I never went for that, so perhaps it's time. Call of arms against House of Stark. Now we are officially at war against the House of Stark. Officially at war against the House of Stark. Look to that. Let's uh, train some of the colonial garrisons with the sole purpose of protecting our shoreline. It should be enough, then we can dispatch our units back to the battlefield. And they're being granted by House of Stark, therefore, yeah, we have we we'll have to occupy them. House of Baratheon. Yeah, they will fall easily as well. Especially because they are led by the Catholic bloc. <laughs> Let's go ahead and even get, I would say, um, the war economy. Yeah. So, we are heavily militarizing the country, the Heart of Lannister. Well, we as soon have the justification ready in our planes, they are gonna move to uh, Bourjon. I like it, like, we can see them actually traveling, I really love this new feature. And the old update, it makes the game pretty more fun to play, if you ask me. Of course... My outermost first priority is to get more military factories. There we go. Getting as many as possible. There we go. Now the Redmond Mountains are gonna fall as well to Lannister Command. Declare war, call allies, and there we go. Now our troops are advancing rapidly. After you broke their first lines of defense. Oh no, we are being invaded by them. By our rear. That's why I needed the uh, garrison troops actually. Let's detach these, okay, that's quite a bit. So these eight divisions, and let's... Uh, oh, we are got invaded by the sea actually twice. They captured all town and this province too. So they have really some nice naval invasion plans, to say the 
bleed, to be honest. Yeah, well, I do. But uh, they won't succeed. Okay. That's why I need. I certainly need these uh, garrison. Garrison units. Let's deploy them at once. They are 20. 20 divisions. Let's make a new theater. And then they will garrison this entire area. Alright. Especially the naval provinces. Okay, high garden. This too, because we're gonna control this as well. All of that, actually. Great. But only the naval dockyards. So I require 20, so I should actually train uh, more of them. Let's try another 20. Another 20 divisions, only ones though. Okay, now no focus here, let's go for the extra research. Okay, let's claim dominance. So, get the claim on arm and buy. Mm. Okay, you go ahead, join the charge against uh, the Otis Martel. Well, now, Otis Stark, Carlos Martel, they lost 84,000 troops while uh, we lost how many? We lost 43,000. We have a field manpower of 1 million. They have 1 million too, so I think it's uh, the majority comes from the House of Stark because if we check their military strength, they have quite a bit. Yeah, there are many units from House of Stark fighting down below there, so I'm going to uh, regroup myself. The war uh, yeah, st stagnated to say the least. In that expression, yeah, the war stagnated, came to a halt. I can give them an extra rigging company, some extra infantry battalions, and an ex extra artillery. Brigade though to strengthen themselves. Although now the thing what they have to do is to regroup, reunite, and reform. That's for sure. Um, so I think I did the spotlight quite well. Uh, let me know down below in the comments how you will like it. That's currently how it looks like. Um, one million soldiers are fighting another million. The factions wise, it's like that. We have the then that's the Baratheon Alliance, and then the House of Tully being just a neutral here. And then, yeah, actually the uh, British Rush, or it's called the Crown and the Crown and the Rush. Crown and the Rush, that's a nice name. Crown and the Rush is actually in our faction. And the world is uh, as usual. But I don't think that we'll see a rise from uh, Germany. Especially since they have the uh, generic focus tree, yeah. I think Germany won't rise here. So, uh, thank you all for watching me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna save it here. Uh, let me know if you would like to see one more episode of this. Let's simply rename the save game. Um, Aim of Thrones. That's actually just for... The spotlight, let's go to the spectator mode once more and see how to start. Yeah, they have uh, 630,000 manpower fielded. They have 73 divisions down below here fighting, so that's why we can't push. While they only have uh, 273,000 manpower. Out of Tuvi has, yeah, half a million men still, so the whole start is quite powerful. How I said, they started off as the, as the strongest country in the world. Won't forget that. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching me, and I hope that you'll have a nice day. Goodbye.